Oh! Shane Carwin was one of the most feared heavyweight MMA fighters of his time and the UFC interim heavyweight champion. And I think I read somewhere that he started his fighting career 12 and 0 and won all of those fights by knockout in the first round. I grew up in the great outdoors of Colorado and spent all of my younger years hunting and fishing. Then I got involved in college sports, engineering, MMA, and the UFC, which has consumed all of my time. It had been a long time since I'd gone hunting, so I was extremely excited when I got invited to join Steve West on the annual Burris Elk Hunt. But we filmed this hunt after he completed the filming of the Ultimate Fighter season and he was rehabbing an injured knee and he was training for his upcoming fight. And we actually got to meet when we were both invited to join Brian Carey from Burris on the annual company elk hunt on a private ranch in Northwest Colorado. The mid-October weather had been warm. The aspens were still holding their leaves that should have fallen. But on the first morning of their hunt, Steve and Shane experienced firsthand how fast the weather can change in the mountains of Colorado. This particular morning, the snow really had uh, the elk messed up. Um, they'd really changed their habits. Um, we really had to uh, try some different tactics to get close to them. That evening was also uneventful. The elk were still out of their normal patterns due to the sudden weather change. But as the day came to an end, 
the weather warmed up and the snow melted and the hunters looked forward to the next day. Follow Steve's Outdoor Adventures on Facebook and Twitter and keep up with all the action as well as find out about some great giveaways that we have throughout the year. Steve, Brian, and Shane got an early start the next morning, climbing the mountain in the dark to get into position before sunrise. We climbed up the ridge in the dark, get a vantage point over the valley, a bunch of elk feeding up to us from below. It's very mild considering yesterday morning it was snowing on us. Now it's about 45 degrees. It's overcast. Should be a good morning. Uh, the wind's in our favor. Well, the second day, the weather really cleared up. The snow melted off, and I had some high hopes for the hunting. But after spending all day on the mountain glassing and calling, we'd only found a handful of cows and calves. You know, sometimes sudden changes in the weather, like the winter storm that hit the day before, can shut the animals down. They dig in and they stay brushed up. This makes hunting them almost impossible. I've been rehabbing a knee injury and training for an upcoming fight. I just got off the crutches last week and these hills they're a real test. It's a beautiful day today. It's the second day out for elk hunting and uh, just feel blessed to be out here and be a part of this. Just before dark, we glassed up some elk in a basin that Brian knew really well, and he had a plan for the next morning. The next morning, the hunters hiked into the basin and found bulls bugling all over the mountain. Right off the bat the next morning, the bulls were bugling and we worked our way in on a bull and got set up. We were surrounded by aspens and this bull was sounding off way up above us. I hit a few cow calls and he came crashing down the mountain. We could hear him, it was just like a freight train. And at the last second, right when I thought he was going to step out in the open where we could get a shot, he turned around, he went back up to his cows, and then he pushed them down the ridge top toward the head of the draw. Now we kept the wind in our favor and moved up. And as they fed out, 
we moved in. We were surrounded by bugling bulls. The cows had fed out into the open, and all of a sudden a bull had popped out over the ridge and started coming to Steve's cow calling. Things were getting exciting. As many other bull elk was bugling around, uh, probably had something like five or six bulls at one time um, bugling 360 degrees around us, but this particular one was the one that held the most promise, at least for a, a good clean shot. After I spotted this bull, I was able to pull him down the hillside to within 300 yards. And I kept calling, and at 274 yards, he stepped into an opening. But just as Shane was about to pull the trigger, he turned away. One more cow call, and he turned back. The shot was a quartering two angle, but it was the best shot that we were gonna get. You got him. Rock another one. Yeah, he's dumping good, buddy. <laughs> Nothing. That's exciting, girl. Right? Uh, I just kept getting more uncomfortable. Oh. Dude, that was awesome. Hey, Dude, I'm pretty awesome sure he's stuff. tapped out right now. He's all done, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank he you. put the smack that down man. on that bull. Hammered him. That was awesome. Hammered him. See that? Oh, hey, fuck. now we got. Now we just got to find out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay right here. You guys go up and over there. No, because if we leave, we'd lose that spot. Okay. When Shane and Brian got over there, the brush was really thick and they couldn't see the bull get up and walk away. And I was helpless without a rifle, otherwise I could have put him down in his tracks. I could see he was hit, so we sat down and watched the video playback on the camera and I could clearly see where the bullet had hit him a little bit further back than we would have liked. So we backed out of there and decided to give the bull several hours to lay down and die and not risk pushing him. These are big, tough animals. But what compounded our problem was that on the walk off the hill, Shane turned his already injured knee that he had been rehabbing. And there was no way Shane was gonna be able to hike back up that mountain and help us find his bull. He would have to stay at the bottom of the mountain in camp. His knee was twisted and swelled up so bad that he, there's no way we could get him back up on top of the mountain for the final recovery. After watching the bull go into a timber stand at the top of the mountain, Steve and Brian knew where their afternoon search would begin. Will they find Shane's bull? Find out after this short commercial break. If you'd like to book your own guided big game hunting adventure, give my office a call. I will personally take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. Today, our buddy Shane Carwin hit a bull. We we're up here looking pretty hard for it, but he's been having trouble with his knee. It's just strained out too much. I mean, he's got to he's got to put some ice on it and stay down at the bottom of the mountain. And Brian and I climbed up here, and our plan is to sneak down this trail that the bull was on. He's not bleeding very good. Hopefully, we can find him and and get him finished off. So. Steve and I and the cameraman went up and uh, did our best to recover the bull. And uh, the cameraman was like, you know, this is this is right where the bull went in. And Craig points down and says, you know, hey, here's here's his track. Well, we've been following the bull for three quarters of a mile as it was, with very little if no blood. Sure enough, uh, within a few yards of him saying that, there's a small speck of blood on an aspen leaf as it's going into the bed pines, and got ready with the rifle, thinking the bull may still be, you know, wounded laying in there. He's dead. We got him. Steve. Found him. He's up above you. He's dead. Man. He was mad when his knee hurt too bad to come up here. Good 
Good job, job man. Checking, man. Shane Carwin's first elk on the ground. My first elk was a cow. He gets a five by five. Wonder if we got cell service. If we do, he's getting a call. I've got three bars. Three? Man, he's 2,000 feet below us right now wishing he was up here and we wish he was here with us too because this is his first big game animal. Absolutely. Yeah, let alone an elk, first big game animal. And he was having such a good time. Hopefully we'll be able to climb up on the ridge, get some self service. And, oh, yeah, did you get him? Hey buddy, I'm, I'm sitting behind your bull right now. Okay, I got the crew, can you hear us? Yeah, thanks guys, man. I appreciate it so much. It means so much to me. Oh, no problem, Shane, man. We just wish you were up here on top of the hill with us instead of down there rehabbing your knee. We're going to get him caped out, taken care of. We'll pack him out of here. Craig and Steve and, and Brian, I just want to say thanks to you guys so much, man. Thanks. It was a uh, great experience, and uh, I'm addicted and love it. <laughs> love it. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hey, no worries. Dude. See you, buddy. Shortly after this hunt, Shane made a decision to retire from MMA. His last two fights will likely be remembered as some of the most epic battles in UFC history, and I feel privileged to have spent those days on the mountain with such a great guy. And I want to thank Burris, not only for inviting me on a great hunt, but for also being my longest standing sponsor of the show and for being such great friends for so many years. And make sure that you watch next week's show, because Brian Carey and I still have elk tags to fill, and I can promise you, that it's a fast and furious ending to an already awesome elk hunt. And remember that if you'd like to book a guided elk hunt for yourself, contact my office. I will personally take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show, but please remember to join us again next week for another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Join us next week as Steve and Brian finish their annual Burris Elk Hunt in spectacular fashion.